What a prick. I'm sorry about what happened to his kid. I really am. I'd be devastated if I lost one of mine. I'd be in bits. But if I had people depending on me, the way that bastard had people depending on him, I sure as hell wouldn't have let my business go down the shit like this. At the very least, I would have handed over the reins to someone else months ago. You know, I can't keep on top of things. Oh, it, it, it wouldn't have been so bad either if he had the guts to tell us in person. <laughs> but what sort of a man makes someone redundant by text message? I swear, if I ever bump into him, even if it's in the middle of Tesco's, I'm going to knock him out. Serious. I mean, think about all the unpaid overtime we did. To get jobs done for him. To keep his clients happy. Yeah. His clients happy. I never minded doing it, not once. Just felt like we were helping out a mate, didn't it? But look, look how he's treating us, stringing us along for months, telling us everything's fine, then out of the blue, without any warning. Just let's go via bloody text message. I mean, weren't we there for him when his little girl died? We almost killed ourselves covering for him, keeping things going. I don't know what I'm going to tell the wife. I really don't know what I'm going to do. She only just booked a fortnight in Malaga last week. But he don't care about that, does he? He doesn't care about my mortgage, my wife, my kids, my bills. His life's falling apart. So he's going to take us down with him. Bloody bastard. Now, I know where he lives, you know. And it's a down sight nicer than where either of us live. I've got half a mind to go around to his house right now and see what he's playing at. Hey, you know what? Fuck it. Come on, drink up, grab your coat, let's pay him a little visit.